Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at your temperature forecast for the next week or so, and we're going to be explaining the, next, the upcoming pattern change. We start off here at the National Weather Service, where we have a freeze warning in effect for parts of North Dakota, and then in the moderate shade of uh, blue, or that medium shade of blue, you have a frost advisory, and that spans anywhere from eastern North Dakota to, um, into northwest North, North Dakota, uh, northeast um, South Dakota and then uh, eastern North Dakota and then in that light blue over the northeast we have freeze watches where temperatures this uh, tonight could get into the mid to low 30s over parts of Pennsylvania, much of upstate New York, almost all of Vermont and some of um, western Massachusetts and then in those dark greens we have flood, uh, flash flood watches and uh, fl flood watches, so uh, just, that's just going to be related to some severe weather that could be popping up today. And then in those pinks, you have red flag warnings. Now, we start off with uh, the European model, the actual air temperatures, and you see this This was for today. Your air temperatures cooled off significantly in the, in the northeast, where yesterday we were around 90 degrees, 95 degrees in New York, where you actually set a record uh, for a daily high temperature. And then today we're in this, we didn't even get out of the 60s in New York. Um, we were right around 58 degrees in New York. So never we never even got out of the 60s. Uh, big contrast in temperatures all over a 24-hour period. It's funny to think that 24 hours ago we were dealing with 95-degree weather. And now it's about 50 degrees outside. So it's pretty uh, interesting how that works. That uh, that's all associated with a frontal boundary, and that's been uh, le that's uh, there's some showers over much of the, uh, the northeast, and that's going to be leading to some cooler temperatures over the northeast. But then, just to the south and the east of that front frontal brown boundary, you're going to be seeing all those warm temperatures. All those grays are 90 to 95 and above. And then over parts of the western United States, we're still pretty cold. Um, or chilly for this time of year. We're still about 10 degrees below average. It's been about a week or so that we've been below average there in the west. Now here, uh, here's your low temperatures. So this would be for tomorrow morning. You're going to be seeing widespread temperatures over basically the northern half of the United States in the 30s. And then as you get into the southeast, your lows could be in the 70s. And then your your high temperatures for uh, for Friday or tomorrow, you're going to be seeing significant, uh, well, still pretty much the same pattern. You're still going to be seeing some relatively cool air over the northern U.S. and then some warmer air over the southern and southeastern United States. Now, here over uh, tomorrow, uh, well, Saturday morning, you're going to be seeing temperatures really dipping down into the 30s over parts of the northeast, and you could actually be seeing a deep freeze or a or a, a frost in some areas, some f first frost of the year in some areas, like New Jersey, Pennsylvania could definitely be seeing their first frost. Places in New England have already seen their first frosts, but uh, yeah, definitely some some icy roadways could definitely be a threat. And then over even parts of the Midwest, you're in the 40s and 50s um, Saturday morning, and then over the West, you're right around 20 or 30 degrees for your low. And then some mountaintops are actually getting below zero over there. There's one mountaintop in Idaho about three degrees below zero. Now, your high temperatures for Saturday in the 90s, and then for your low, uh, for your uh, your high temperatures for Sunday, you're going to be seeing right around uh, pretty warm for much of the eastern United States. As a warm front is kind of approaching this area, you're seeing some warmer temperatures to the east of this front that's right here that's associated with some severe weather as well. Your low temperatures for Sunday, you're going to be seeing uh, right around 40, 30 degrees over parts of the northeast and 50 degrees into the Midwest, and then still very cold for the for the for the western third of the U.S. and pretty warm still for the southeast. And now after this point, we're just going to basically be looking for 
your pattern, you see there are, there's some colder temperatures right on the back side of this system that's going to be associated with some precipitation. And that's why you see this sharp cutoff of temperatures. So the warmer air getting suppressed temperatures in the 70s and 80s over the eastern uh, coast. And then as you get further south, potentially some, 80, uh, some 85, 90 degree readings. Now, Here's your low temperatures for Monday the 7th, and you see some widespread cold. This is what I really wanted to show because I was looking at the models yesterday, actually, and it was been, it's been popping up for a couple of days that you're going to be seeing cold air dipping fairly far down. Temperature is 50 degrees uh, as a low all the way down into Florida. You're seeing those uh, with uh, what this what like if this were were to pan out and it's been pretty consistent on the European model and the GFS model as well so definitely those are the two most reliable models most people would say and I agree um, and those are forecasting they're both in agreement so rarely that happens so it's a pretty good chance that that's gonna happen now your high temperatures in the 70s and 60s for the most part and then low temperatures, this is what I really want to get at. Uh, you see how there's a lot of 50s and 40s and 30s over almost the entire U.S., west coast to east coast. Uh, it's pretty extraordinary how we have so much cold air in place uh, all the way down into the Gulf states you're getting into the 50s. And then your high temperature for Wednesday the 9th, uh, and you're seeing pretty much uh, a system moving throughout the parts of Canada and that's going to be leading to warmer temperatures to the east of that and uh, that's a low pressure associated with that right here some precipitation ahead of the front and some more warmer, warmer temperatures ahead of the front as well and then colder temperatures to the west of that and then your low temperatures this is the final slide for the European model uh, and your cool and your um and your low temperatures are going to be in the 40s and 50s uh, almost throughout the entire U.S. Except for parts of those Gulf states and parts of the desert southwest. You're going to be seeing temperatures right around 60 to 65 to uh, begin your morning on Wednesday. Now, I'm, I'm just uh, going to really talk over this. And you're going to be seeing this uh, more frontal, like you're going to be seeing more frontal systems uh because of this new pattern, you're going to be system see systems that are moving across, and they're going to bring colder air over the uh, west of that, and east of that, you're going to be seeing warmer air. So once those pass, once those systems move off to sea, you're going to be seeing colder temperatures off uh, to the east. Finally, we're going to be seeing some cooler temperatures, and that's really due to a new pattern trying to set up and later on in the video we're going to talk about this but really a new pattern wants to set up where you're seeing colder temperatures uh for most of the days for the eastern united states so troughing in the west and uh actually ridging in the west and troughing in the east which is what you we're uh, pretty much used to for now over the past couple of falls and winters we've been seeing this pattern where you have cold in the east and then warm conditions over the over the west now we're going to go into temperature anomalies and i'm not going to really go in depth in all of these but we're going to look at four models we're going to look at the european model we're going to look at the canadian model the gfs model and then the gfs ensemble models and we're going to be just kind of going over what they think and kind of comparing them so you see some pretty warm temperatures over the eastern united states and that's associated with the warm front but once that moves past by early next week you're going to be seeing colder temperatures for the east and warmer temperatures for those western and central United States and then the northwest is also pretty cold and then you see more cold air funneling in from Canada. Now we're going to look at your GFS model now and uh, also one thing I want to point out the GFS model really uh, likes to likes to show those hot spots so right around city so i'll just use new york city for example you see around around new york city and new jersey pennsylvania connecticut you're not really seeing those uh about four to six degrees above average but in in new york city philadelphia you're seeing those you're seeing those warmer temperatures that's just due to since the temperature anomalies are are based on past data 
of course those cities got warmer as there was more building in that in the cities and so on so that's going to lead to warmer cities so it should it's actually going to be closer to what the rest of these areas are but um they like to show the cities as warmer than the than the surrounding areas just because it's a it's considered like a hot spot so there's warmer conditions in those areas now we're going to go on to the GFS here and you see Pretty much the same story is actually occurring here. You're going to be seeing colder conditions, and those are going to be pretty persistent. And colder conditions for the central U.S., and then as those fronts move past, you're going to be seeing warmer for the east until those fronts move past, and then you're going to be seeing cold kind of infiltrate, and uh, you're going to be seeing that same pattern. Now, we look at the gym model, and... You're going to be seeing this one, uh, I don't agree with the most, but it's kind of scattered all over the place. But it kind of has this same idea of there's going to be systems that move uh, out and off to sea and they're going to bring warmer and colder temperatures with them. So you see that they, they're they kind of scattered, the gem model, uh, not the most reliable model, uh, but I wanted to get all sides of the spectrum here. So you see, they do understand, they do get this the same general uh, idea that there's going to be cold fronts uh, pretty almost every couple of days over uh, the eastern U.S. Now we're going to look at the GFS ensemble models. This is the last model we're going to look at, look at. And you see the GFS ensemble models, they're pretty, they're about 30 models, uh, GFS members that are going to be combined. So they're more averaged out so that's why it's not as high definition, but you, they're uh, very reliable because you have multiple models that are all forecasted together. So this is the average. So some air, some some places will use uh will use the desert southwest. Maybe five models picked up on colder temperatures here, but twenty five other models picked up on warmer conditions here. That's gonna lead to that those areas being warmer than average because more models picked warmer than average so that's basically how to understand the gfs ensemble so as we move on you see those colder temperatures for the northeast colder for the northwest and then a plume of warm air over the central united states and the southeastern united states as a front moves past you're going to be seeing those colder temperatures in right behind the front and those warmer temperatures in front of the front and uh pretty much the same idea and we're uh gonna end the video here that was the final slide thank you guys for watching if you do uh if you did like this video please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the video also hit the bell icon because that's how you'll get notifications every time i upload a video and you'll never be uh you'll never miss out on a video thank you guys for watching and that was eli the weather guy i'll see you guys in the next one